Steph, let me tell you, they are so sneaky. So, so, so sneaky. Thank goodness for Richard, our Scary this afternoon. He kindly helped us find them. I think they did a bit of shuffling around and thus re revealing at least one of the lionesses. Now we've come down into this little gully system and we've got one of the cubs to find that they ended up catching something. I don't know when they could have done it. Um, it looks like the this young cub, it looks like it's chewing the leg of a buffalo calf. So... We know that one calf is not going to be a very much for two adult lionesses and for youngsters. It will pretty much just be one good, one decent meal. And I, they could have done that quite recently too. Maybe they only did it an hour ago or so. Because when I saw them, they went fast to sleep. And it also looked like the buffalo were perhaps going to sit down. So maybe once the buffalo got up from their midday nap, and the buffalo tend to have naps quite often around here, and one in South Africa too. There you go, you can see it was a little buffalo leg. I know it's not a wildebeest because there haven't been any wildebeest around here whatsoever. Not even one that's confused and hanging around with a zebra. So can only mean that it is a, a buffalo. And so I'm very happy. I'm sad that we missed it though. But again, you know with lions, you never know when they're going to hunt. I think cheetah are a little bit more predictable it got exceptionally hot but again that doesn't mean that they're not going to hunt at all but very cool I'm very happy they were looking a little bit hungry the lionesses definitely deserved that meal and I think even more excited than the lionesses are these youngsters and I can hear them gobbling up just to the left of me maybe I don't think you'll be able to hear the crunching is it a bit soft hey David D Darby can't hear it through his headphones, which means you won't be able to hear it. But every now and then I can hear a crunch, and I think that they're obviously squabbling over the carcass because this youngsters have managed to grab a leg and run away with it. It's not having anything to do with any of its siblings or its mom and aunt. I've decided it's quite happy to just stay down here, hidden away amongst all this lovely grass. It's nice and cool here too, sheltered from the wind. So beautiful. <laughs> So, Kathy, you've said that you you went, ah, oh, look at all the little spots. So you've noticed all the spots. Now, I think I can, oh, no, I can hear some people, but it's not the people that I'm looking for. Um, so, so spots are very important for animals, for camouflage, especially when you're a young lion. Uh, it helps blend in when you're left alone while mom goes out and hunts. So that's just one of the reasons why they have it. And they typically lose it as they get older. However, I, we've spoken about this quite a few times. We have said that I have seen adult lionesses um, that are fairly old where you can see the spots still prominently on their body. So it, it, they don't always disappear. But how great is that? And what I will try and do is I will try and venture up onto this little island um, that the lions have marooned themselves on and try and get a view of the rest of the pride. I just need to figure out how exactly I am going to do that. But for now, we'll just have to wait here because that will take some serious maneuvering. And um, I might be a little bit embarrassed that you will watch me do that. <laughs> but we'll do that in, in, in a little while. Isn't this great, though? Now, sausage tree pride, you pesky lions, you've evaded a kill. Well, evaded, what am I even trying to say? I wasn't able to see it happen. When am I going to see the Sausage Tree Pride successfully make a kill? One day. Perhaps they're going to keep me on my toes for the entire stint that I do in the Mara. You don't look like you could really fit too much in your belly. Look at those dirty elbows and paws. So obviously been diving into the carcass. Perhaps it doesn't quite look like blood. That looks like maybe more stomach content uh, that it has got on its body. And they're very messy, these youngsters. And because it was so small, it would have been really fascinating to see them all fight over it. Gobbling every little bit up. Now, speaking about food and they're not being too much around for these lions. See, now you're wondering if lions will ever sort of store their food. So cacheting it. Now, we know that leopards are notorious for doing this. Crocodiles seem to do a similar thing, but I, I reckon it's maybe for other reasons, not just um, saving it for later. Obviously, they struggle quite a bit uh, when it comes to tearing flesh off. They have to do the death roll, and sometimes that doesn't always work. But once your flesh is rotting, it tends to fall off the bone quite easily. Sorry, that's quite macabre, but um, it's the truth. And with lions... 
I think it's a little bit different. They want to eat their food as quickly as possible. So I haven't seen lions cacheting food like leopards will in trees where they'll, you know, kill an inyale. Here, put it up a tree and then they go for a drink and, oh, there's another opportunity. They catch an impala. They'll put it up a tree and then feed on that one later. Um, so I've never seen lions doing that before. Um, but what I have seen lions doing is getting up from a kill and going to kill something else and then having an abundance of food around to feed on. Obviously, if you've got a big pride of lions, not many animals are going to come through and try and mess with you unless it's a bigger pride of lions or a massive clan of hyenas. Everyone will sort of stay away. But when you're just two lionesses with four cubs, I actually don't think you want to have too much food around you because you really just become sitting ducks and you'll get the vultures coming through, hanging about, the hyenas will become a pain and also start hanging about. So sometimes it's quite nice to just eat as much as you can and then move on. Sort of like cheetah. I think it's, it's very similar with cheetah. Cheetah, you, you don't, they don't really want to be sitting on a carcass for too long because the amount of things that will come through and chase them off and then they miss out on a meal or potentially, you know, end up getting hurt because they're trying to defend themselves or they're not paying attention and they are surprised. So if I were a cheetah or if I was a lioness on my own and not living in a big pride, I'd probably just try and catch small things just enough for everybody to get a very a decent meal to feed on it for a couple of hours or a day, but nothing too massive because I think trying to ward off other predators in the area could potentially put their lives at risk. Right, seeing as though death has now fallen upon us, Steph has found himself a zebra carcass.